Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and it is time for a new version of Godot. Godot 4.2 just shipped today, and we're going to jump in and take a look at some of the sexy new features. Uh, so what you see in front of you, this is Godot 4.2. One thing you'll immediately notice is the user interface is a lot more clear. They've taken a lot of the clutter out. Until you select something, it's basically minimalistic. It just shows you what you expect to see in the scene, and I very much appreciate that. On top of that, there's been a number of just general improvements to the UI. Uh, things like, for example, if we go over here, here to the uh, signals for a class, you are now going to get hover over documentation for everything, which is a very nice improvement. On top of that, we have other little things like over here in the file doc. I can now select things and give them coloration. Helps you just kind of organize things a little bit better. Now back to the scene you see in front of you. This is actually an example I pulled in from a current Humble Bundle. This is using GLTF, and GLTF got some improvements as well. GLTF is basically the native uh, file format for Godot 3D objects. So every time there's improvements to GLTF, it is a nice thing to see. This one, we've actually got uh, improvements to the transmission, the GLTF transmission layer. So let's go here, find our world environment, and I will show you. So you now have emission strength. So we got here, so this guy right here, and the lights on the bar, that red strip down below, these are all being controlled by uh, emissive textures. So now let's go over here to the inspector, and you're going to see if I go down to glow, and we turn that off, you can see the results of GL emission, uh, GLTF emission there. So you can set emission strength in your content creation tool of choice or when you're importing it from a third party. So this actually came from Unreal Engine. Again, I will have the link down below if you want to check this model out yourself. You do have control over these... Um, 3D scenes, which is actually really quite cool. The, the GLTF emission is all there for you. Now, another thing, and this is honestly probably my biggest favorite new feature of this particular release, uh, and I'm going to need another thing for that. So I'm going to go ahead, we'll open up Char's Revenge over here, this folder, and we'll open up that file folder like so. And I'm going to bring in an asset from here. So this is from GD Quest examples. So we're going to bring in Sophia over here. This is a GLTF file in binary format. We're just going to go ahead and import that in. So you can see it imports our asset in accordingly, like this. Now we can go here to the asset, and we can double click it, and you are now in the GLTF importer. If you bring in an object that is animated, such as this character, you will now notice there is animation preview for GLTF imports. This is sweet. So let's see here the um, run animation on this guy. You can go ahead and preview it to make sure that your animations came in fine. Now one of the annoying things is the viewport seems to be bugged. I was kind of hoping this would be fixed before uh, 4.2 finished, uh, but now you do have this GLTF import preview. Now the biggest thing here though, and this is honestly my favorite new feature in Godot 4.2, and I never really understood why this was a thing, but it used to be you grabbed an asset like this, and if you went ahead to uh, the import folder, and you re-imported it like so, uh, it used to require a restart of Godot. Now, it literally just re-imports and is ready to go, which is, again, a very nice change. I, again, I don't know why that was a limitation before, but it's nice to see that that has been resolved. Now we're moving on to probably my second favorite feature, and this is a Blender-style keyboard handling. I've already set it up, but I will show you how this works. I think I set it up, but I don't know if I saved it. So here, I got this character selected, unselect it right here, and if I want to move it, what I can do is I can hit the G key, and this is the blender style movement. So now I can use the blender style hotkeys G, R. So I hit the R key, and then you can see my rotate accordingly, and S for scale. So if you're coming from the blender world, you're going to appreciate this. On top of that, you can do neat things. So here I'm going to hit the G key to select, like so, G, but now I'm going to hit the Y key immediately after, so Y to move, and 1. So you can do things like grab, move 1. And here's another example, scale X five. And we just scaled that five down the X axis. It is really powerful once you get used to the way that um, Blender works. And now you can use Blender style hotkeys, including those combinations of things together. So you can do basically the key. So G for uh, grab or translate, S for scale or R for rotate. And then you can follow it up with an axis or I could do something like no follow up. So S two, and I literally just doubled the size. But you could also, again, confine it to an axis, so S, Y, two, and we're scaling twice in the Y axis. I love this in Godot, and I'm so, sorry, I love this in Blender, and I'm so happy it's been added to Godot. In order to actually set this up, though, you need to go to Editor Settings, and then you need to go over here to Shortcut. And what you're going to do is search for Begin, and it's these three that you're going to want. They're going to be unbound by default. Go So for Begin, Rotate, hit R. For Begin, Scale, just go over here, put so here, for example, go here, 
and then hit the S key like so, and done. So do this R, S, and G, and you can now use Blender-style uh, manipulators inside of the Godot game edge. Hugely powerful. I am a huge fan of this addition. It's, it's like one of those little things, especially if you're using Blender as your end-to-end, -end, and Blender slash Godot as your end-to-end -end development environment, having the same set of transforms is also really nice. Now, on the topic of transforms, we also have a new feature for boxes. So let's go here, root node, add in this guy, and we will add a box, a CSG box as an example. But this applies to any kind of 3D box you add into your scene. So here is a CSG box. What you're going to notice is you now have these new manipulators right here for doing quick sizing of a CSG box in the world. Just grab those and manipulate accordingly. And... Bob's your uncle. So if you're working with a, a volumetric shape, you use all kinds of things that, with volume shapes like this. Well, you now have these new uh, manipulators that make it very easy to size box-shaped objects. Now we're going to move on to a couple of small scripting uh, changes here. So let's attach a new script here. Hello, Sophia.gd. Uh, most of these are pretty minor. There's also some improvements to GDScript language itself. We got some improvements to .NET. We'll get to those in the release notes in just a second. But we got a couple of little small things. So we got like things like this. So now you have special highlights for things like to do or fix me, and you'll just they stand out a little bit more. And then the cool thing here is you can now do region um, region blocks. So uh, let's do this whole area, my code, like so. And then at the end of this, we'll do uh, end region. So, and now we're going to notice is you have collapsible areas around that particular code. Again, a nice quality of life usability type feature. And back to the world of 3D. One more thing to demonstrate. And here, let's get rid of Sophia. Bye, Sophia. And thanks to GD Quest for creating that one, by the way. It's completely free and available there. And again, this scene uh, is available right now in Humble Bundle. It's easily export as GLTF. I'm going to show you actually how the process of going from Unreal Engine to Godot specifically. I've done a couple of videos on it generally, but I'm going to do a Godot specific one in the future if you're interested in checking that out. But what I'm going to do now here is a particle system. So we've got a, a major change here in going forward. It hasn't been a huge change yet, but we're going to show you a bunch of new features to GPU Particles 3D. Just be aware, these didn't actually make it to CPU Particle 3D. CPU Particle 3D is mostly a legacy thing for older devices. Uh, they are not going to have feature parity going forward. It's just one of those things you need to be aware of. It's probably a fine thing at this point in time. So there is our scene. Let's just move our particle system over here, which by the way, very cool. G, Z, and let's just move it on Z axis. I am so happy that these hotkeys are in here. All right, so here we go. Our particle system right there. Uh, nothing too exciting going on yet, so let's set this guy up. Obviously, you need to create a couple things. First thing is we need a draw pass, also known as a particle to particle. Uh, we're going to just go ahead and create a sphere, like so. So there is our particle. The other thing you need is a process material. So let's go ahead and we will create a new particle process material. And there we have a particle system going. So there was a complete rewrite under the scenes for how particle systems work. But this has actually exposed a couple of new controls. One thing you want to be aware of right away is there is now a new signal for finished. So you know when the, the particle simulation is done. Very handy if you're trying to synchronize particle systems uh, in code. Uh, but on top of that, let's just open this guy up. You're going to notice you've got some new functionality. So you actually can create, sorry, they change the emission over time. But we also got things here. You can now change the animated velocity over time. So while the particle is actually running, let's give you an example of this. We're going to go ahead and show it with, say, directional velocity. All right. So here, directional velocity right here. Um, let's add a couple more particles to the system. So let's do 20 particles in during this time. Uh, we'll create a new velocity curve here, like so. I'll set the maximum to four so you can see a bit more of a profound effect. There we go right there. And then we go ahead with our curve and we can do something like here, control this over time, create a new curve there. And let's edit our curve. So put a point there, put a point here, play around. So you got more fine-tuned control over your particle systems overall. Definitely a nice new feature. And I'm just kind of scratching the surface of what is actually new in the functionality. But we definitely had some improvements there as well. And then one final thing to show you is where I could have actually started. Yeah, let's go out to the project list, like so. So come on, don't save, don't save. Here we go. So this is the particle, uh, sorry, the uh, uh, project manager uh, of Godot. And you're going to notice there's just been a kind of a bit of a reorg. So over here, uh, you've got down to your actions. So you've got, again, your tag management, which is actually quite cool. So you can actually add and remove tags to define things by and then filter by them accordingly. So you can only see things of that particular tag, for example, or all things in general. But the other thing they've done is they've moved the do stuff. So create, import, and so on are all over here. And then these ones are over here.
Nice little change there as well. Uh, and they also streamline things like the import process immediately opens up a dialogue instead of bringing you to like a text prompt and then a dialogue. Uh, just little streamline things. So instead of going straight to this guy, you go to the, the selector there as well. So some improvements right at the very beginning at the project manager. So now let's head on over and check out the release notes. All right, so here we are in the Godot 4.2 release notes. I'm not going to go line for line reading this to you. So by the way, if you contributed something in this release and I don't cover it today, I apologize. I wanted to highlight a lot of these visually because I know most of you guys will fall asleep while I'm reading things. And hopefully you enjoy your ASMR with Mike today. Uh, but you'll notice here, there are a ton of changes. Over the last five months, 359 contributors, 1,800 improvements. So again, I am not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to basically glance over this. If you want to help support Godot, just details are available right here. Uh, they have broken down into the various different sections that are there. Do be aware there are some critical and breaking changes. For example, Animation Mixer is a merger of Animation Player and Animation Tree. There are also changes to the graph node and the way that works. So if you are bringing things in from Godot 4 or 4.1, do be sure to check out uh, if this is going to break your project. So there are a couple of breaking changes just to be aware of. Uh, we've got a number of changes to the core. Uh, there's improvements in Godot 4.1 uh, on um, things like multi-threading and so on that they have continued to improve and fix bugs around them. So a, a number of bugs were fixed in that regard. Uh, another neat thing that they've added is the ability to actually load Og Vorbis files at runtime. Uh, same goes for SVG files. So it's not going to work for a lot of people, but if you need to dynamically load audio or vector graphics uh, assets into your project, you can now do so at runtime, which is kind of cool. 2D got some love, of course, uh, to probably arguably one of the strongest 2D game engines out there. So always nice to see improvements right there. Uh, this one's neat. Integer scaling has been implemented, so you can have square pixels regardless to your resolution. Uh, on top of that, we've got the ability to do... Um, this new ray casting functionality. So if you're creating an F0 type game, uh, you can have these new functions of rotate towards and angle difference. And you can see a demonstration of that in action in this GIF right here. Uh, got improvements to animation as I alluded to earlier on. There's going to be a new animation mixer, which is going to be kind of merging together animation player and animation tree. Uh, there's also some other improvements here as well, such as onion skinning, allowing you to pre uh, see proceeding and upcoming frames. Uh, and then we've got improvements to navigation as well. So uh, Godot 2D now has uh, the nav mesh baking, bring it up to parity with 3D. It's capable of handling physics bodies, mesh instances, plane polygons, and of course, tile maps. Tile maps also got some love. We'll get back to that in just a second. They both now support multi-threading when baking the world navigation mesh, uh, which removes stutters and brings performance to a whole new level. As I mentioned, tile maps got some love. Uh, so they got... Uh, tools here for, again, optimization, improvements, performance there, uh, and things like Y sorting, which is really important when you're dealing with 2D graphics and layered on top of each other. Uh, and then on top of that, we've got a number of usability improvements here. So a new tool allows you to flip and rotate any tile or tile pattern when placing them in the world. And the list continues improvements to scene tiles, polygon editing, various hints, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then there's some bug fixes in the editor as well. Uh, the editor also got some usability things. I, I showcased a couple. These are broken down into various different categories below. Uh, so the code editor, uh, the new fo cold folding, uh, code folding stuff. Also the uh, comment toggling and auto commenting functionality was actually improved in this release as well. The viewport got some love. Again, my probably one of my favorite features, if not my favorite. No, my favorite feature is definitely the ability to import GLTF files without actually reloading or import anything without having to reload the editor. That one is going to be a life changer. Uh, but the implementation of the BR and S uh, for the translation, rotation, and scaling uh, from the Blender world, I love that. Again, I showed you how to configure this and how it actually works, but a little bit more detail of it right there. Um, and then on-screen gizmos, I showed you here this one earlier as well. So if you're dealing with uh, something volumetric in size, uh, this shows you basically those uh, simple manipulators for scaling things around. Uh, and then 3D viewport, less clutter, uh, as some auxiliary visual animation is only displayed for selected objects. So it's not always there and in your face. It makes it look more what you see is what you get when dealing with things. Um, and then we've got some improvements to the docs as well. As I showcased, I think I highlighted all of these things. So you got the new uh, text over uh, tool tips for signals. You have the new ability to set uh, the color coding of folders, etc. So just nice tweaks to the, um, the user interface in general. Uh, asset library got some improvements. You can now install an add-on or an asset, be it from file or search results. You can specify different install folders. Um, 
And then search results themselves were also improved here. Uh, Project Manager, I showed you some of the new improvements to the UX there as well. It's nice to see as well. And this one is more technical. It's not really something I can demonstrate on scene for editor plugins and also GD extensions. Uh, editor plugins have now have the uh, editor interface class, which gives you actually more control over um, the UI of Godot itself. So you don't have to do the hacks you used to have to do to get access to that. Uh, so that sing singleton there are now handy methods to get direct references to the 2D and 3D viewport. So making tools uh, that hook into the editor uh, using editor plugins are going to be a lot less hacky now. Uh, and editor plugins can now uh, trigger the warning dialog. So if you have unsafe changes, you can click that up as well. So if you've got a plugin, an editor plugin that has content creation and you want to have a, a, are you sure you meant to exit this kind of prompt at the end? You have that functionality now. GD extension also got some love. So GD extension is the extension system. It replaced uh, the plugin system in the past, GD native, etc. cetera. Um, this is basically a way of uh, building uh, large extensions extensions, very core level stuff into Godot itself without having to do a complete rebuild of Godot. So it basically it's a plugin system, but a very deeply one. Um, so this one has a number of improvements. So notable improvements in unexposed class registration, custom callable support, index properties, and advanced registration. Uh, but the coolest thing is probably uh, we have hot reload here. So uh, major and long-awaited improvements, development workflow of extensions after some initial work by these fellows was able to implement in editor hot reloading. So where previously an editor restart was required to pick up on changes in a GD extension library, updates can now be handled on the fly. This makes also uh, this change also makes C++ scripting with extensions a more viable tool. So if you're a masochist and you want to script your game logic entirely in C++, you can now do so with GD extensions and hot reload. Uh, so another big deal here is dynamic libraries can now be loaded on the web platforms. Uh, which means GD extension can be used with web export. So that is nice to see. And I do think we are still waiting on GD extensions for uh, Android and iOS, but please don't quote me on that. Uh, improvements to uh, GUI and theming as well. So individual tabs can now receive focus, including keyboard navigation, uh, changes to the graph building. This is all experimental at this point in time. So I'll go into more depth of this one uh, once this is not marked as experimental, uh, but and changes to the way graph nodes work in general. Uh, video stream player, new properties enable seamless looping. Uh, and theming side, provide a fix for the theme editor collapsing when editing its inner resources. Also contains a number of internal changes, paving the way for stuff in the future. Uh, importing, again, some big stuff here. One of my uh, favorite features, obviously, is the fact that you no longer need to reboot Godot uh, when you change or re-import an asset. That is definitely a huge deal. GLTF also got some uh, love there. We saw it in the demo of the emissive strength being brought in as a property. Again, I will have links to that scene I used down below if you want to go ahead and check that out. Uh, but so now it supports KH, a KHR materials emissive strength extension there. Um, and then on top of that, uh, you can export meshes from Godot as an important part of the workflow, such as blocking out level geometry and so on and so forth. Uh, so several of the inconsistencies and problems in that export process were moved out. And there's also support for the KTX image format, which is part of the basis universal used in GLTF. Uh, some improvements to input handling. A lot of this actually is behind the scenes. It's going to make it work better. Resolves a number of existing problems there. Uh, some improvement to networking as well including multiplayer synchronizer and having the ability to synchronize sub-resources property, transforms components, and other index data without having to synchronize the entire object. Should make replication lighter when it makes sense to do so. Uh, we've got uh, improvements to various different platforms as well. So we heard earlier on about GD extension on web platforms as one example. On top of that, they now have support for uh, native Linux, Mac OS, and Windows file uh, user interface, especially useful if you're creating tools using Godot. Uh, and then we also have uh, copying and pasting of image support in here as well. Uh, Android uh, got some love, uh, changes the way that uh, the new Android platform architecture. So this decouples Godot from the Android fragment component, unlocking new features in the process, such as multiple Windows support and quicker startup times. Uh, there's also some news when I get to .NET. We'll get there in just a second. Also, we have Android Stylus support like Apple Pencil that already exists. iOS got parity with Android with the addition of one-click deploy. Uh, Linux got some improvements as well. So in terms of the rendering side of things, I showed you the new particle system stuff. Again, do remember that CPU particles and GPU particles are going to diverge from this point on. So they were going, not going to have feature parity going forward. Um, and yeah, so definitely some improvements in this guard. We have uh, the new uh, compute shaders. So there's a neat new um, example of how this actually works, but 
Two new goodies for compute shadings are uh, the ability to create custom texture objects. Uh, again, the demo uh, is available right there. Uh, and the ability, a set of API calls to compute code on the render thread for cases where you need to synchronize compute shader and rendering. Uh, and a, a major bug was fixed in here as well. Uh, we have support for AMD's FSR 2.2 upscaling technology, uh, which is especially useful if you're working with Steam Deck, because that is a, kind of an essential technology there. Uh, so a number of improvements in how FSR was implemented in general. And then another area that changed is there is a new light mapping denoiser, which is replacing the older OIDN. It should be faster. It also, I think, made the Godot binary even smaller, which is kind of cool. There are options for using the old OIDN denoiser if you so wish to do so. Plus, a number of light mapping issues were resolved. Uh, so forward plus in mobile rendering uh, in this release includes now 2D HDR rendering, which gives you 3D effects such as glow for 2D games. Uh, HDR rendering can be used to substantially improve the quality of 2D rendering at the cost of performance. And uh, last but not least, Angle backend for OpenGL uh, was released for uh, Mac OS and Windows. Angle is a backward compatibility layer for OpenGL that basically, instead of using OpenGL drivers, which can be a little meh, uh, it actually run on top of um, modern APIs such as Metal or Direct3D11. So you can work around old deprecated drivers now using Angle. So it's just going to give you a wider variety of support. Uh, we covered most of the particle system changes, but there are a, 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 there's a lot more there. But I think we demoed most of what actually changed on the particle front, which is nice to see. So uh, shaders, visual shaders got improvement with the addition of a drop-down list property to custom nodes. And output ports for vector types are now expanded by default. In-text shaders, improvements were done to uniform sampler arrays to give them support for more hint types such as filter modes. Uh, we do have a scripting changes as well. Kind of gets into the weeds. Cool here, uh, the script debugger now comes with full support for threaded code. So threaded code again was added in Godot 4.1, I think. Um, so if you're going to debug multi-threaded code, you can now do so, which is quite nice. C Sharp uh, got a, a big step forward. Uh, experimental support for Android via .NET 7 or hi higher and iOS for .NET 8 or higher. So two of the biggest issues with C Sharp right now is the lack of support for those two platforms. So that is definitely improvement there. Uh, and then a number of improvements to the bindings generator, etc. in the world of C Sharp. But C Sharp finally coming to mobile is definitely a nice thing. Uh, and then we got some improvements to how GD Script works as well, such as for loops now supporting static typing. Um, and then uh, raw literal strings or R strings were added, as well as return type covariance and parameter type contravariance, um, and implemented pattern guards for most at matched statements, also optimized operator calls. I showed you this earlier on. There's now those simple built-in things like the uh, to do and fix me, and we also have documentation comments such as deprecated and experimental there. And... Um, you proved hovering, uh, hovered symbol resolution, fixed various bugs, and so on. So GD Script just basically should have gotten better. And in the world of VR AR, that is also now called XR. Uh, so there was a published update on what is going on there. Things like foveated rendering support, uh, being backported to Godot 3.1, access to raw hand tracking data, and so on. And then uh, other improvements there as well. So yeah, that, ladies and gentlemen, is Godot 4.2 uh, in a nutshell. So uh, even though I said I was going to do it quickly, still 12 minutes to run through the release notes. Hopefully you guys found something to love in this release. By the way, if you want to get really into the details, there's also this guy available right here. This is their interactive change log. It shows you every single thing that changed in this actual release. Uh, and you get an idea of, again, 1,859 commits, 1,800 pull requests, and 359 contributors. So really, it does take a village in the case of Godot, but Godot is, is just moving forward at such a massive rate. So I'm wondering, what do you think of Godot 4.2 at this point in time, favorite thing in this release. By the way, the assets you saw in action here are from the Ultimate Game Development Software Bundle. This is for Unity and Unreal Engine. I've shown you how to get both of those assets over into Godot. But again, stay tuned. I will do a dedicated um, Unreal Engine to Godot asset conversion video because every month uh, Unreal Engine gives away a number of very high quality assets. Plus, there are often humble bundles like this one uh, that have some really nice stuff in here that you can actually import into Godot with actual shocking ease. And I'll show you the process in an upcoming video but that is what the uh, level that we looked at in this particular um and this guy right here was the bar the cyberpunk bar scene right here. no not in the laboratory the bar but anyways uh it came from here uh so if you're wondering where that asset we demonstrated the new uh, gltf emissions is from it is from this particular bundle so again this is linked down below if you want to go ahead and check that one out and now that's it Godot 
4.2. What's your favorite new feature? What do you think? Are you impressed by the rate of change or do you wish things were developing faster? Let me know all of these things in the comments down below. Hopefully you found that useful and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.